On Easter, a priest and a taxi driver both died and went to heaven. Now, St. Peter was at the pearly gates waiting for them. Come with me, he said to the taxi driver. And the taxi driver did as he was told and followed St. Peter to a mansion. It had everything you could possibly imagine, from a bowling alley to an Olympic-sized pool. Oh, my word! Thank you, said the taxi driver. And next, St. Peter led the priest to a rough old shack with a boat bed and a little old television set. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I think you, you might be a little mixed up, said the priest. I mean, shouldn't I be the one who gets the mansion? After all, I, I was a priest. I went to church every day. I, I preached God's word. Yes, yes, said St. Peter, that's true. But during your Easter sermons, people fell asleep. <laughs> and when the taxi driver drove, well, people prayed. <laughs> So buckle up, <laughs> because I think we might have gotten a little too comfortable with this Easter story. I think we might have forgotten how it all started. Before the Easter eggs and the trumpet, before even the resurrected Christ, there was Mary, lonely, Mary, walking mournfully to the tomb while it was still dark outside. Mary Magdalene, who'd been by Jesus' side for years, with him when he healed the sick and opened hearts to the power of love, she witnessed the crowds crying out in adoration and the envious glares of the religious leaders. She saw the fear in the eyes of the disciples as they fled and helped Jesus' mother in hit her arms at the foot of the cross. And now it was all over. How could she believe in the promise of Jesus after everything that went on this week? She had come under the cover of Easter morning's darkness to lay down her broken dreams beside Jesus' broken body in the tomb, her hands bringing burial spices, her heart carrying sadness, disappointment, and loss. Sadness, disappointment, and loss. That might be what many people including Rob Ford's family, are waking up to this morning. A priest I knew once said, I'd rather preach on Good Friday than Easter Sunday, because Good Friday is where so many of our people live. Who here hasn't walked with Mary on that pre-dawn journey to the grave? At some point, we've said goodbye to a lost love, an important relationship. We've watched a dream job vanish into thin air, gotten news about our health, worried for the fate of our children, our grandchildren. Yesterday, I said to my aunt, with all the bad news in the world, it feels like Good Friday was a whole week long this year. And my aunt, who had just lost her 47-year-old son in January, said, it feels like it's lasted for months. Despite God's promise to be with us, sometimes we wake up feeling like the weight of our Good Friday world is too much to bear, and it makes it hard to believe that Easter is Reverend Lockridge, a prominent African-American preacher from San Diego, used to say, it's Friday, but they don't know that Sunday's a-coming. 
And when he said it, she couldn't help but getting fired up in the belly. So you will be completely forgiven if you feel like shouting out in this next section as I relive his words with you. He used to say, it's Friday. Jesus is a praying, Peter's a sleeping, Judas is a betraying, but Sunday's a coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling, the council is conspiring, the crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary is crying, Peter is denying, but they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat Jesus. They robe him in scarlet. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. <clears throat> it's Friday. Jesus is walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, his spirit burnt. But you see, it's only Friday and Sundays are coming. It's Friday, the world is winning, people are sinning, evil is grinning. It's Friday, the soldiers nailed Messiah's hands to the cross, they nail the Savior's feet to the cross, and then they raise him up next to criminals. It's Friday, but let me tell you something, Sunday is a coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king, and the Pharisees are celebrating and that their scheming has been achieved, but they don't know that Sunday is a coming. It's Friday. He's hanging from the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday. Sundays come. It's Friday, and the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, Jesus yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan is just a laughing. It's Friday, Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard. A rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It's only Friday. Sundays are coming. And when Sunday came, while it was still dark, Mary made her way to the tomb and discovered that it was empty. Upon hearing the news, the despondent disciples raced each other like excited children to the gravesite. And upon peering in, John saw the abandoned linens, felt his spirit quicken at the sight, and remembered everything in the scriptures and everything that Jesus had told him. He believed once again in God's love. Mary lingered by the grave. Her sorrow and confusion made it hard for her to see the angels that had been sent to tend to her. In her grief, she could not recognize that she was cared for. She didn't see Jesus standing beside her as she wept until he broke through her sorrow with words of love. Mary, I'm right here beside you. It was Friday, but Sunday, Sunday is here. And with the dawn of Easter, comes a whole new reality. I have seen the Lord, cries Mary. She is the first Christian preacher. I have seen the wonder and the beauty that is God's resurrected world. This world that the prophets spoke about where Jerusalem is a joy and its people delight. I 
have seen the hope that can take us to a future where children do not weep for hunger, where the name of God does not provoke war, where creation is rebalanced, and there is peace on God's holy mountain. Into the poignancy of every Friday comes Easter Sunday. God's Sunday, and we don't even have to wait for Easter to experience it. We can catch a glimpse of the love that transforms us any day of the week. If you were reading the news last week, you might have seen Easter arrive a few days early this year. For centuries, the Pope has been washing the feet of 12 Christian men for centuries on Holy Thursday. But two years ago, he broke tradition, washed and kissed the feet of a woman. Last year, he kneeled and washed the feet of prisoners. This year, he welcomed 12 refugees from different countries and different religions. And as he bent his face to the skin and feet of a Hindu man, I'm sure that I saw Christ standing there. It was Friday, but Sunday's here. I was speaking with my friend Kate in Brussels last week. And she told me about having to get back on the metro a few days after the bombing. She was making her way through the train, carrying the weight of leaving behind school-aged children to enter into the uncertainty of life, when she came across a message left by another passenger. On the wall of the train, in fresh paint, was the word hope. Hope. And like Mary, caring and having caught a glimpse of divine love, she came home, proclaimed the good news. She made hope her status update. It was Friday, but Sunday's here. <coughs> Whoever you are, whatever you've been through, Know that the promise that was made a long time ago by a love so powerful that not even death can stop it is true. And it stands with us in our sorrowful confusion. It calls out our name when we are lost. It rises with us when we proclaim that there is good news in the world. And it lives in us when we allow Christ to be reborn in our hearts, our words, and our actions. It was Friday, but Sunday is here.